All right, we're going to go ahead and get started then. Uh, welcome to How to Create and Share Primary Source Sets. This is part of our Docs Teach for Virtual Learning series. Uh, we've got um, more of these coming up. The next one is on Thursday, so we hope you will join us again in two days for that. Um, Docs Teach is a website that's really uh, full of primary source documents from the holdings of the National Archives, as well as online activities uh, that you can use with your students. So today we're really going to focus on those primary sources. Thursday, we'll, we'll talk more about using the online activities that you can find on the site uh, to, to teach virtually. But today, we're really, uh, as I said, focusing on those primary sources. And um, it's, it's almost the simpler part of Docs Teach, but it's, uh, it's really helpful. It can be really useful, especially uh, teaching in this virtual environment. So what I am going to show you today is how to create primary source sets on Docs Teach into um, to, to find primary source documents uh, on Docs Teach and how to uh, compile them into folders that you can share with your students uh, while you're teaching virtually. So to get started, I'm actually going to go to one of these folders that I already set up. And I just chose an example for today of Westward Expansion. Uh, some of you may be teaching this uh, when you uh, uh, get your classes going again here in a month or so. Uh, so Westward Expansion, uh, I've got, I've, I've chosen some documents here. I've got a variety of documents. And so this is, this is what my folder would look like that I, I could share with my students. Uh, I've got, um, you know, Homestead Act related documents, moving westward documents, a variety of documents as well, textual documents, photographs, uh, maps, etc. So I'm going to show how to get to this finished product. So we're going to go right back to the home page of Docs Teach to get started with our document search. Um, now, I want to point out that I am already logged in on the site, so that'll make a difference in a minute. So um, to create these uh, Folders uh, of primary source documents, you do need to be logged in. So it's a, a free account if you don't already have one. But I'm going to go ahead and click on primary source documents here. And this brings us to our document search page. And I'm just going to go ahead and type uh, Westward Expansion here and do a, do a quick search and see what we get. Uh, now, as you can see, we've got a whole variety of documents found, 110 different ones. That's, that would be overwhelming for our students. So we're going to narrow down and choose the ones that we want to put into our Westward Expansion primary source set. So uh, when I've got to my results page, I'm going to click on date here to go ahead and sort these primary sources so I can get into the, to the era that I'm talking about. Uh, I was, uh, the, for this example, I am going to be picking documents for the, you know, Civil War, post-Civil War, westward expansion period. So while we know the United States was uh, certainly expanding west earlier than that, um, that's the, the unit that I've just chosen as an example here. So I'm going to move, move ahead in time here. Since I sorted these by date, I'm going from older to newer. And I can go ahead and get... Um, now I'm, now I'm starting to get into the time period that I'm looking for. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get started by clicking on the Homestead Act here. So this is, this is the Homestead Act. Uh, we probably, uh, if you teach the Homestead Act, you probably don't often um, teach the actual act. But, but this is it. This is what it looks like from May 20th, 1862. Uh, this is in the holdings of the National Archives. And uh, here on Docs Teach, you can zoom in on this document. Uh, we can see here that this is an act to secure homesteads to actual settlers on the public domain. And we've got multiple pages of the document. I can click through the document to, to view the multiple pages. And just showing you sort of an outline of, of what this kind of document page looks like to start with, just an overview. Uh, here we have a, a more of a description of this document providing some historical background. This document, since this is a bit tough to read, this one includes a transcription. Uh, not all of our documents on Docs Teach have transcriptions, but uh, in this case, um, we we provided one. We're increasingly trying to provide those for documents that are uh, a bit difficult uh, to read. Uh, there's more information, including you know why this is in the holdings of the National Archives, where it came from, and also down here you'll see some activities that use this document. So again, we're not going to go into uh, these online activities in in this webinar today, but you can see the Homestead Act is quite popular. It's been used in many documents, or excuse me, many activities that have been created by educators with Docs Teach accounts. You can see some of these, for instance, reasons for westward expansion here, the settlement of the American West, 
what else was happening during the Civil War. These, you can see that these were created by the National Archives education team. So we, we note that so that you um, are, it's easier to identify those that we have created here at the National Archives. So if I scroll back up now, I wanna draw your attention to a few other buttons up here that are really useful when we're talking about uh, distance learning, uh, teaching online. We've got, um, you know, if you wanted to, this document could be printed out. So we've got this print uh, button here. There's also download I, uh, icon here where you can download all the images of the document if um, that's how, if it's easier to share with students that way. This plus sign is for adding this document to activities, which we'll talk about on Thursday. And then here we've got this star button, and that's what I really want to show you today. So I'm going to click on this button to add it to my favorites. And I've got, if I click on this, I've got multiple uh, folders that I've created in the past, but I'm going to just leave this as it is to create a new folder and put this document into it. So I'm going to Click Add, and this is going to add the Homestead Act uh, to, to a, a brand new folder that I've just made. Uh, but I noticed, I'm going to go down here, and I noticed that in this description, it talked about Daniel Freeman uh, making the first claim under the Homestead Act. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that to, to check out this document, or these documents. And so here, yeah, we can see uh, what we have in our holdings. We've got this actual Homestead application number one. So this is this is it, the very, you can see application number one here, the very first application made under the Homestead Act. I'm going to click through to the next document related to Daniel Freeman. And uh, here we've got Daniel Freeman's proof required under the Homestead Act. So while the Homestead Act itself is, um, you know, I don't know that it's as accessible for students, right? It is, it is rather lengthy for them to read. It's legal language. It's a congressional document. It's, um, it's in script and um, not, this, this might be a little bit more accessible to use this actual proof. Uh, a lot of times when we teach the Homestead Act, we are talking about what was required uh, to, to get that land under the Homestead Act. And this really lays it out here. So we've got Daniel Freeman's name, says that he's a head of a family. Uh, it talks about where his house is built. It talks about the improvements on the house, et cetera. So um, on, on Docs Teach, because we have uh, primary source documents from the holdings of the National Archives, we have a lot to draw on um, in terms of what kind of primary sources we choose to put onto Docs Teach. Uh, we have records from uh, primary source documents, uh, historical records from all three branches of government. Um, and all, all different parts of the government. So we, um, we might have these very formal acts of Congress or, or laws, uh, but we also have their application in, in, in documents like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and star this document. And now in my list, I can find, um, it just gave it a, a name of today's date and the time I created this folder. So I'm just gonna go with that title for right now while I continue to add documents to this folder. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just check out our next document on the list. Um, here's our Daniel Freeman's final certificate uh, showing that he received his land under the Homestead Act. I'm gonna add that one to my folder as well. So click star, choose my folder created on August 4th and add it to that folder. Now I could also, I did a very general search for Westward expansion, but if I go up to menu here in documents, which will bring me back to the document search page, I could get more specific. So I could actually do a search, an exact phrase search for Homestead Act, and that would really narrow it down. So it went from 110 to 20. And some of them we've seen, these the Homestead Act itself, you know, Daniel Freeman's paperwork. Um, but these are the ones we've seen so far are more, you know, they are government documents and um, it's nice to provide a variety. So when you're pulling primary source sets together, you want to provide that variety of documents. And so, for instance, this photograph um, that's in our holdings is um, a primary source uh, document, a photograph from 1866 actually showing a family in their covered wagon headed out west um, in Nebraska in this case. And so I'm going to add that one to my folder as well. So again, click the star button, find my folder, and go ahead and add it to my document. So that's gonna you know, bring in that more personal element to it. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, return to those search results and see what else would be useful for this primary source set. 
uh, I'm going to click on this document here. So again, a variety of types of documents we have here. It's worth it to uh, find different types and pull them together so that your students can see um, history from, from different sides and also consider um, what are these documents? Who made them? What was the, um, what was the uh, position of, of the creator of the document? What were they trying to do? So in this case, this document is um, claiming Indian, Indian territory, that Garden of the World is now open for homestead and preemption. This is actually a poster in our holdings, and this is a poster with a map included in it here. And this is actually, um, if we go down and there's a lot of details to, to look at here. This is um, one of the most popular documents on Docs Teach that, that teachers like to use. But you can see down here it's coming from a general ticket agent, um, and this is actually from rail, a railroad company, so this is actually an advertisement uh, to get settlers out to the point where they might claim some land. So um, obviously this document is gonna bring up a, a larger conversation about the land and who owns the land and uh, some treaties, et cetera. So that's, that's the document that I wanna go ahead and include in this primary source set. So I'm gonna, again, choose that folder and add this document to the list. I'm going to go ahead and go just back to those results. I, I noticed when I was looking at, at this ahead of time, one more uh, kind of fun document. So we have um, several other documents here related to, to the Oklahoma land rush. Um, you might get a kick out of this, another homestead proof. I won't add this to my folder, but you may recognize the name here. That this is a homestead proof testimony of Almanzo Wilder, uh, husband of Laura Ingalls Wilder, of course, of Little House on the Prairie fame. And um, this is a you know, digital uh, image of the actual proof of um, uh, th that Almanzo Wild for Almanzo Wilder's um, uh, homestead, which is pretty neat. All right, I'm going to go back and go back to the menu and documents and, and do another document search here. So again. You know, you might want to search for a broad topic like Western Expansion. You might want to think about subtopics to search for in that case. So what if I search for the Transcontinental Railroad? Obviously an important part of Westward Expansion. I have several, several um, primary sources here. For instance, this image of joining the tracks. Uh, we've got another image coming up related to that. So here's our Golden Spike Ceremony in Promontory Point. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and add this one to my folder. This document, um, this would be a great one to think about, you know, perspectives in history and representation in history. Um, for instance, who, who is or isn't represented in this photograph? This is clearly a choreographed photograph um, celebrating this moment, but of course we know for instance, that there are many, many Chinese laborers that worked on the railroad that are not pictured in this photograph. So that this this type of document can be a, a real uh, conversation point for for talking about representation in in the um, in the historical record as well. Let's see what else we've got for railroad here. Um, you know, here's a, here's a, a bridge in Wyoming. If you uh, you know teach about the terrain that the that the the railroad had to get through the difficulty of building the railroad. We could add that one to our folder as well. I could also, I'm going to return to my results down here and show you that I could also filter uh, my results here. So if I click on refine by era or document type here, I can choose a document type. And in this case, I'm going to select map and see, well, what maps do we have related to the railroad? Uh, if I click on this survey from Omaha, Nebraska to San Francisco, California, then um, here is, you know, we have many, many maps in our holding. So this is, this is also a, a great type of document to pair and again to mix, mix the different types of documents that you include in your primary source set. So I can really zoom in on this map, see it's coming from Nebraska. You can see the Union Pacific Railroad line here and how it's going to make its way through the Rocky Mountains and all the way. To California. Can't remember if I put that in my folder, so I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go back to my document search and choose um, an even more specific topic now. If we 
look for barbed wire, which we know is important uh, uh, as part of westward expansion on the plains uh, for fencing and cattle industry. Um, we have uh, many, many, many patents um, from the United States Patent Office that have come to be archived at the National Archives. So in this case, you have an 1874 patent for barbed wire that you could include in this folder of primary sources. And I'll just do one more example here of uh, a sort of subtopic, again, back to menu and to documents here. What if I search for timing? We know that was another reason that um, people were uh, drawn westward. Um, so we have uh, a variety of mine, mining related imagery here and documents, um, including from, from out west, places like Virginia City, Nevada. Here we have a miner at work and we could include this in our folder as well. So I've just found a, a sampling of documents that we've uh, included in our folder now. And I wanna to go ahead and show you um, now, I, I showed you when we started how we, would that finished product look like, uh, but now that we've created it, how do you find it and, and how do you organize it? So what I'm gonna do is click on menu and go into my account and click on my documents. And here are a variety of folders that I have created in the past here. And I'm gonna go down um, to look under F because remember it just had that sort of generic folder created on date. And here it is, you can see all these documents that I just added into this folder. And if I click over here on this edit icon, I can click on it and rename this folder. So I can go ahead and name this Westward Expansion and rename the folder. All right, so now it's uh, at, at the top of my list here. Here are uh, all the documents that I've added. We've got some check boxes here. So if you ever wanted to, um, for instance, uh, remove any documents, you, you just select this drop down and you can remove them, copy them, move them to a different folder, create a new folder, etc. I'm gonna do that right now, but I will show you where you have this link icon next to the name of your folder. Go ahead and click on that. And here you've got the link to share this folder. So just copy that link and then go ahead, you know, if you paste that in your browser, then you see the final product of the folder that you just created. And uh, again, you're, you, you know, see the variety of documents that you've got here. Um, definitely encourage uh, selecting a variety, both in terms of um, accessibility, how well your students can, can read them and analyze them, but the type of document as well. And um, so what kinds of things can you do with this folder full of primary sources, this primary source set that you just created? Well, um, you could go ahead, um, for one thing, if you're, you're, you're teaching online, if you are in your full class or small group Zoom meeting or your Google Meet or, or whatever virtual, um, or uh, excuse me, video platform you're using, you could screen share this folder and walk through these images with your students. Uh, pointing, pointing out uh, details, asking them to point out details, analyzing the documents. So that's, that's one option you could do. Um, for instance, if you, if you looked at the Homestead Proof of Daniel Freeman, uh, you could zoom in and you could give your students a moment and say, I want you to type into the chat box or virtually raise your hand and let me know um, a requirement that you can tell that this person had to fulfill in order to get their homestead. Another thing that you could do, if I go back to my folder here, is to um, take this link, the link that you, you found on your My Documents page, the link um, to get to this folder, and share that directly with your students. So if you have an, a learning management system that you use, an LMS like Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, any of those, uh, you can just paste this there and your students can click on it and they will come exactly to this page and be able to interact with these documents just as we have. Uh, specifically, if you use Google Classroom in your district, you, there's this green Google Classroom button just above the title. You can click on that. If you do, it will open the Google Classroom interface where you can um, create an assignment, include this link, and when your students go into their Google Classroom to uh, do that assignment, they will click on the link and end up uh, exactly on this page, again, where they can interact with these documents. Um, and you also, you know, you can 
put them together in this way that you have, um, you know, your primary source set available for an entire curriculum unit that maybe you refer back to um, as you move through the unit. Um, this is these are the primary sources you're working with in conjunction with other resources that you're using to teach, um, or perhaps you use it for uh, one particular lesson. Um, what you could do instead of doing a broad topic like Wexford expansion is to focus um, pull, pull pull a few primary sources together. Um, about uh, subtopics or, or just smaller topics where you actually get a different link for different groups of students. So you could p put your students into small groups, give each small group a different link, have those students uh, visit and observe and analyze the primary source set that they've been given and come back in your full class um, Zoom, Google Meet, you know, video um, meeting and have small groups share out what they have found. You could do that with individual documents. You could have students pick a document or you could assign different students different documents and have them share out in your full class setting what they have learned by looking at these particular documents. So it's a, it can be a way to, to differentiate. You could have different, different documents for different students. Um, and, um, it, you know, however you want to use it, but it's, it's got a lot of flexibility here for, for you to use on your, your virtual platform. Um, of course, the other thing you can do with all of this is, um, you know, instead of putting these into a document folder, a primary source set, you could actually pull these together into an online activity or find an online activity exists that pulls together documents like this and, um, that step we'll cover in our next webinar on Thursday. Um, before I uh, stop, I wanna just show you a just a couple of more examples of some folders that I created. So I'm gonna go to my account and my documents again. And I'm gonna click on this um, transportation in time folder. So again, I've got the link I could share with my students. I'm gonna paste that into my browser address bar and I'm gonna go to this what I called transportation in time folder. So here is, um, for instance, if you wanted to use this with much younger children, you could, uh, the younger grades, you, you could pull just a couple of primary sources. I certainly wouldn't recommend more than that. And if you have, you know, pre, pre um, students that are not reading yet, then uh, photographs are a great way to do it. So this same uh, family with their covered wagon photograph, you could uh, in your in your full class, you could ask students to point out details and um, look at the photograph, and you could do the same for the second photograph, which is a really very similar photograph. But you could use these two photographs to talk about time. What, what which of these photographs is older, and why do you think? And by going through that process, where they might notice hmm, that's a horse-drawn wagon and this is a car, they are practicing some skills of um, you know historical contextualization and using clues and really analyzing primary sources on a basic level. All right, one more one more example. My account, my documents. I'm going to go into a different folder. Here's another one I pulled together for for some younger students, maybe not quite. Um, pre-reading age, but um, maybe a little bit older, but certainly one that could be used with elementary students. Uh, this one has to do with civic participation. And you know, you could pull together uh, a sampling of primary sources for how is it that we can participate in our government and in our community as citizens or as um, interested parties. And so we've got a few examples here. So for instance, you could click on this document and show them what is what are these people doing? Okay, this is a this is voting. This is from a different time, but voting is one thing we can do to participate. Uh, here's a youth march. So we've got some students marching for integrated schools here, making your voice heard. Here's another way to participate. Uh, here we have a petition to Congress, uh, and students might not be creating petitions to Congress, but certainly petitioning is a way where if you disagree with something or you um, want to make your voice heard about something someone is deciding on, you can put together a petition and sign uh, several names to it to show the support for an idea. And, 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 and making your voice heard through, through writing to representatives. Um, so we'll, so it'll be the last document I show you today, but here's a document to President Ford um, asking for a kid's day since we have a Father's Day and a Mother's Day. Why can't we have a kid's day? So this is certainly um, participation in government in a way and, and making, making your ideas heard.
So um, those are some, just a few ways that you can um, pull primary sources together into primary source sets. Um, and uh, thanks, thanks for watching. I'd love to answer any questions you might have. And um, we hope to see you at our, another, our next webinars that are coming up this week and next week.